All right, check out this video. We're going to talk about ministry stuff and ministry again. And more stuff, but you know what? What the best thing that we're going to talk about mm. is? Jesus. That's right. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning, guys. The background ain't blue because I didn't feel like turning the blue lights on. Oh, that's right. I just didn't feel so like it. You guys it. can just see natural. The naturalness of the fish. Organic. Orale. Yeah. So, guys, it is Monday night for us, Tuesday morning for you guys here in the year 2022. Gas prices are excitingly high. <laughs> I bet a lot of you guys aren't going anywhere. You're spending a lot of time at home, which is okay because maybe you need to be at home spending more time at home. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh man, where do we start, guys? Um we had a really first of all shout out to House of Rest Church. They were out there with brother Eli um on ninth street and i every single monday evening yeah you know and uh man it's beautiful to receive the pictures the reason we weren't there is we had a, a really great meeting um with the brother um a minister and uh, uh brother hassan you know and and um he had wanted to sit down and talk and we had a great i didn't realize we took three hours yeah really really long but you know what I was tremendously, tremendously blessed because um, I ended up getting a video of Jade being out there, mm -hmm. Jade and Corina with with their mom. And, um, you know, they showed up last week towards the end of us being out there on Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, she rededicated her life to the Lord. Amen. Um, yes, I was really, really blessed because she rededicated her life to the Lord uh, last week um, towards the end of us being out there on Monday. Man, she was out there. Girl, I seen you. I seen you all, you know, dancing in the spirit. And man, I, it, was, it blessed my heart. Amen. It blessed my heart. I was just, I was just ready to cry with, you know, tears of joy. Um, and I was just rejoicing with you, sister, because it, it just, it makes me so happy to see you happy out there with the flag and just rejoicing and just being out there with all the brothers and sisters and um, and just doing the work of the Lord mm -hmm. and just being out there with everybody. So yeah. that made me happy, sis. It really did. So praise God that you were out there with everybody, with your brothers and sisters who love you so very much. Um, just keep, keep, keep going. Keep being out there. We yeah. love you. We love the fact that you're out there with everybody. Yeah. yeah. So um, what else? What else has happened? S Sunday, we... Yeah, we didn't do a devotional yesterday, but Sunday uh, service was was great. Uh, Sister Sonia and JD, they're the the couple that led worship. Yes, um, that it's was beautiful. beautiful. You know, um, it's um, man, this year has been different, guys. It has. Ever since been. January, no, actually, it was kind of a weird January because real quiet, people weren't coming. Remember, and I was just like, what's going on? You know, and um, real quick, guys, I'm I'm like the type where I'm always trying to, I never want the Lord to say, okay, I want you to go straight. And then I don't want him to be like, okay, turn right. And then I keep ignoring. And I'm like, well, you told me to go straight. You told me to go straight. Uh, so when people stop coming, I'm like, Lord, are you changing the chapter on me? Like, am I supposed to be doing something else? Something else? Mm -hmm. And it was just a quiet before the storm, honestly, because as soon as the last week of January came, boom, people started coming and started filling up. And, and, and not just filling up, it was just different. And it's been different ever since. Shift. Yeah. And, and that's the way God works. I have been in, in Christ long enough to recognize um, a shift. Yeah, you know? but not just a shift in... Um, not just a shift in the atmosphere, but I think a shift in... in, in people's lives themselves yeah, and everything in, in in them and their spiritual walk you yeah. know um 
I think everybody can can mm-hmm. speak for for their own attest for their own lives. You know, um, I've seen such a, a spiritual growth in people. Yeah, and in a in a fire um, individually and collectively in in everybody. Yeah. And I'm just seeing I'm just seeing a, a a spiritual growth amongst each and every person. It's been just amazing. Well, you know, I. I attest to everything you're saying with those that were already part of the family, mm-hmm. but God is bringing other people, people. into the fold, Yes, you know, and, and it's, it's almost strategic. And, and I, I just sit back and I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like at the end of, edge of my seat, excited to see what God is doing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but so, yeah, man, we had a great time. Um, we didn't have Star Wars night. But we did have some fellowship a little bit after. And... But, but you know what's crazy is that I, I told him, can we not have Star Wars night? Because I just really want to, I really want to get home. You know, I really wanted to rest, guys. As you guys know that it's been um, a really tiring last week. Um, the last few days, it's been very, very tiring. I um, mean, I told him, I really, really want to get home. But the Lord still had his own plans. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't get home right away, guys. <laughs> so we were trying to leave the church. Before it, a lot of other people, usually we're the last ones to close it. There was still about 10, 15 people there. And we're like, let's go. Let's go eat with my parents because my parent, my mom and dad wanted to eat with us. And Brother Tomas shows up like a pilgrim. That dude shows up with a whole ham already sliced and honey glazed, a stuffing, salad, salad dressing, some rolls. Yes, those soft little rolls. And I'm like, what? You know, and, and I was just like, man, but we told their parents, uh, you know, that my parents were going to go eat with them. So Tomas was like, I didn't want them to feel bad because I'm like, oh, my gosh, because I knew Tomas was going to bring something. But I thought like a plate, like for me and her to share. Like maybe he had leftovers from the night before something, you yeah, know. Yeah, but he showed up with. I'm talking big old meals. Yeah, like a big thing of stuffing, a big thing of ham, a big, you know. So then your what, parents seen that when so Tomas is like, oh man, you're gonna go eat with them. Oh, that's cool, man. He goes, I'll just bring it in. You can take it home. And he starts bringing all this stuff in. My dad is looking. My mom is looking. And they're like, why don't we just eat here? Or you said it or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And we're all like, you know what? That sounds great. So we ended up just. Breaking bread there yeah. at the church, guys. And I knew, I knew, I saw it in Tomas's face because I felt bad, man. But it's like we're like, man, we told their parents. We're yeah, leave, but, but we we ended up breaking bread there together. Yeah, and Tomas ate with us. He and... ate with us, and then Louis showed up, and um, Abraham came in, and we had you know lunch there with our parents, and um, it was wonderful. It was beautiful. It was so delicious, and we yeah. had a uh, pretty much dinner, lunch dinner there. Um, and then um, when we were done, Al and Lydia came back. And yeah, that's right. Al and Lydia came back. Because they said they're being nosy. They saw the car still there. <laughs> and they're all, what are you guys still doing there? So they came back in and we had um, a really good talk with them for a few more hours. A much needed and, talk. Yeah, a much needed talk for another few hours. And then Daniel and Naomi came back. Yeah. And we ended up being there even longer. With them. So guys, what what was supposed to be a, like, let's get home early on Sunday did not turn out to be a let's get home early Sunday. Yeah. Uh, we ended up leaving at nighttime, guys. Hence, no devotional yesterday. Yes. It ended up being um, a late night. Um, so I really, really was yeah. n- really, really uh, tired, guys. And, um, I, you know, I, I did look at David and I said, you know, do you want to just do this on your own? And it was really, really late. I said, I ain't and, doing no devotional past midnight. Yeah, it was really late, guys. And I was and, tired, too, you know. And we were. We were really, really exhausted. The night before, um, I really wanted to do that sermon I did. And I and it was, like I said in the beginning, it was inspired by a book I'm reading, Watchman Nee, The Spiritual Man. And uh, so I wanted to get some, some notes right. And I know usually I don't write notes, but I, I didn't want to miss miss quote some of the things that that I felt were powerful and needed to be conveyed to the congregation. Um, I was up to two in the morning doing the sermon. And guess what happened at two, guys, if in California? It time switched. Change. Time changed. When it went to two, it went to three automatically. Yeah. So all of a sudden, 
I'm closing my computer up and it's three in the morning and I got to wake up at seven. And that wasn't it though. On top of that, um, our whole music system ended up dating. It, remember it updated? Oh yeah, it updated. Our music system updated and it changed everything on us it guys. It changed the, the, the format. The, the whole format the and everything. Changed. And we were just like, Really, on literally the day where I read it before on church, daylight savings, on daylight savings, the day before church, it changed everything on us. And we're like, we don't have time to learn this. Um, all we did was learn one button just, just to get us through Sunday, yeah. guys. It was just crazy. So, so. yeah, so, um, um, by the time I I closed the computer, it's three in the morning. By the time I actually got into bed, it was 3 30 and I had to wake up at seven. And, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, Tomas bringing the food and Sister Lydia coming and now and then Daniel and Naomi. And by the time we're getting home and I'm like, I can't do devotional. So I'll, basically, you've heard seven minutes of excuse why we didn't give you a devotional <laughs> yesterday. So leave me alone. <laughs> and you guys know he's been doing them by himself, guys, because I had literally been baking and... Um, I've been, I've had a commitment for the, you know, I think for the last two days um, prior to that for uh, an event in Southern California that I had committed to and um, my back had been killing me guys. So you guys have been getting this guy by yourselves, you know, for two days in a row. So, yeah, so, so thank you for being patient with us. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to, Talk not not really a Bible verse, but a, a biblical concept that I thought bringing up, and I think you'll relate right away. Really quick though, huh? I, I wanted to give oh. a quick little shout out to uh, Brother Jeremiah. Okay. You know, um, I I wanted to to I wanted to you know it was crazy because he always calls me Lady Shar, and you know it. it oh, it, you mean Josh? Oh, sorry, Josh. Sorry. Oh my God. Yes, to Brother Josh. Um, he always calls me Lady Shar, and, and for some reason, somebody had requested me on Instagram, and and until he said, you know, hey, Lady Shar, you know, I'm like, hey, I hear that on, on YouTube all the time. Mm -hmm. And then oh, I didn't, you didn't re relate it to it. Yeah, I didn't relate it until after. But when I accepted him, I was so happy, and I was so proud of his, um, I was so proud of his story and I was just really, really proud of you, brother, because I saw that you were on a transformation journey, um, a weight loss transformation journey. And, um, I just want to commend you for that because it was so inspiring to me to see that, that weight loss journey. And, you know, it, it takes a lot and it takes a lot of hard work to do what you're doing. Um, and to bring um, awareness to to many and to be able to go and actually to start a page to actually share that journey with and to make it public and to share it with people. It's not easy to do that. And um, man, I commend you for that, you know, and, I, you know, I, I wanted to um, I wanted to share that, you know, mm -hmm. and I wanted to I actually wanted to let people know for those of you that are family. Um, I do want to share that that page with people because it's it's a really really big deal because I really believe that we should um, as brothers and sisters go and be able to support you know our our loved ones and our family um, that are on here and he has an Instagram and it and it's called Eat Godly um, and I, I praise God for for people who are bold enough to be able to make a change, a big change in their lives, because I know that he's lost a lot of weight and he continues to lose more, you know, and he shares a lot of um, a lot of his journey throughout his page. So, guys, go on there and it's just eat godly on Instagram on Instagram and um, and look eat for him. godly. Yeah. Eat godly. One just word. like that. One word. Eat godly. And um, and you'll find him on there, and it's and and his little header says something God made. Guys, go look for him. Support your brother. Um, and um, he's always in the comments, especially Wednesday Bible studies. Is he? I don't know if he's on Sundays because I can never see because I'm up there preaching. Yeah. So yeah. he does. He does go on there, guys, constantly. 
um, go out there, support him. Um, mm -hmm. Let's, you know, bring encouragement. Say hello to him. It. Let Say him know. Say hello to him. Let him know that you're um, following him because we got to support and, and give encouragement to one another, you know? So keep going at it, brother. Keep doing what you're doing and um, be encouraged. We're right there with you. All right. So mm -hmm. just wanted to give that shout out there. Amen. So this concept I wanted to talk about, actually, we might read a little bit of scripture. I don't have my Bible, but Sharon has her phone. So um, I want to say this first. If you notice, um, I heard California does this. I don't know if other states, but we're really bad at this. I don't like doing this, but I see other people do it, is when there's an accident on the freeway, even if it's on the opposite side, it becomes gridlock on this side. Yeah, because of looky-loos. Looky-loos, or I call it rubbernecking. <laughs> is yeah. everybody is nosy, and people are just drawn to drama. People are drawn to accidents. People are drawn. It's almost as if, do you, do you want to see something gore? Do you want to see some blood? Do you want, what, what, why? Do you want to see something destroyed? I'm not sure, because every time we see an accident, I mean, we pray. Instantly, when we see a car flipped, huh, we're like, oh, Lord, Lord in Jesus' yeah. name, protect whoever was in that car, God, you know. So we start praying, you know, and as we should, um, but... We keep it moving. We keep it moving, right? So anytime, like I said, when when something like that happens, right? And if you've ever been, if you if you remember when you are in high school or at a, at a social event when you were younger, maybe, and there was a fight, what happens? everybody runs through the fight, mm -hmm. right? And it's the weirdest thing because most of those people that run to the fight say, no, we don't believe in violence. We don't believe in gang violence. We, but the moment there's a fight, there you are, the first one watching. Yeah, there you are with your camera. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Especially nowadays. And, and for some reason, something instinctively in us always wants to be drawn to... The drama. To the drama and stuff like that, right? So... How do I bring this about biblically? Is I'm noticing something in the church. I'm noticing that if there is somebody teaching or preaching a good word, and there's somebody outside getting healed, everybody will run to that. If there's if there's a demon coming out of somebody, honestly, that that's kind of a a humiliating thing for the person. The person with demons. That is not something that you shouldn't take pictures of that and video and this and that. Like all everybody, you know, wants to. It's almost like a fight. Like it's like everybody goes, everybody goes, and 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 I asked. I, I bring this up to to say this. What did Jesus think about the crowds? What did Jesus think about the crowds when he healed, when he cast out demons? How did he feel about all the crowds? Right. Because ultimately, the way Jesus felt is how we should feel, mm -hmm. right? Don't get me wrong. I think it's important. We have been given that, that tool. We have been given that gift to cast these demons out. We've been given the gift to lay hands on the sick for them to be healed. We've been given that gift to give a word, to give a prophetic word to, you know, all those things. But should they be causing people to rush like a fight or a car accident? What would Jesus do in that situation? Because think about it. Shouldn't we do what Jesus did, right? Yeah. Well, a, a, a passage in the Bible did come to mind. And it is in John chapter 6, I believe. And it might be a, some of it. I don't know what portion until Sharon opens it. Um, but John chapter 6 and um, something interesting happened, right? Six Start at one, because I don't know where. Let's see. Um, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it is. Um, well, let me let me do the context, right? Is that he had fed. 5,000 men plus their wives and children mm -hmm. with just a few breads and fish and a whole multitude came. So after that, it was crazy, right? Because it was like Jesus was going around preaching. I'm cold. Sorry, guys. You're covering your mic, though. Put your mic higher if you can do that. No, I'm oh, right here. That you're in cover. Calm 
down. So I got those San Marco blankets, guys. <laughs> so um, it was like this, right? Jesus was going around and, and preaching, but all of a sudden, this miracle with bread and, and the fish, and all of a sudden, everybody goes. And, and here's the thing I know about humans. Most of those people weren't going to hear Jesus. They wanted some of that bread. They wanted to see it. They wanted to see a miracle. They wanted to be a part of it. They were rubbernecking, right? Metiches. Yeah. So. Ay, comadres and compadres. <laughs> um. So it actually talks about that in John chapter six. That it. it I'm not going to read it, but it's when he says, Let's "Have everybody sit down." He prayed for the bread. He prayed for the fish, and and everybody was was fed. And then after that, it talks about him going to cross. To the other side of the lake. That's when he's walking on the water, right? So then the following day, look at this. It says, on the following day, when the people were standing on the other side of the sea, saw that there was no other boat there except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with the disciples, but the disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread. Okay, so anyways, we're going down now, and um, they started asking him about signs. They're like, "Hey, are we going to see a sign today?" Basically, they're saying, "Are you going to make? Are you going to feed us with bread again? Are, you gonna, are we going to see it again?" Because I brought my cousin, I brought my primo this time to see it. Like all these crowds, because of what God did, this miracle. And here's the thing: what's real dangerous in Christianity is a lot of times we want to follow the miracles and not the miracle worker. Mm-hmm. Right? You get where I'm going with I this? I get what you're. I get what you're doing. Okay. So, I'm going to go down a little bit, and Jesus starts giving a word. He doesn't break bread. He doesn't give him fish. He starts preaching. And he basically saying, oh, you want bread? You want bread like yesterday? He goes, I am the bread of life. Mm-hmm. So, he redirects the crowd to himself. He goes, because why are you chasing the miracle? Chase the one that caused the miracle mm-hmm. to happen, right? And people Chased got the mad. miracle worker. People got mad. It says, the Jews then complained. About him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I've come down from heaven? So, so in other words, oh, it was okay if he was going to give you bread, but the moment he starts giving word, now you get mad. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, and it says, Jesus therefore answered and said, Don't murmur among yourselves. Don't quit talking behind the side of your neck, you know? Why are you talking amongst yourselves? You're not letting me read the message. I know. So. It's a, I don't, I'm just jumping around. I'm jumping through. We're going through the whole chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Now you're talking out the side of your neck. Whack, whack, whack. When we get to the main part, then we'll read it in the message. He's talking out the side of his neck, y'all. Everything I'm saying so far is I'm setting the stage for the main portion. All right. Okay. All right. So he has this, this little debate with them, right? And, and they get really mad. And then this happened. His disciples, his followers, people that considered themselves followers of Jesus. Here's the part now. It says, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then, if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, to the twelve, the twelve, do you also say, do you also want to go away? So he looks at the twelve disciples, do you want to go away too? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we've come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So I want you to read, starting at 60. Mm-hmm. In the message, starting at 616. It's probably way down there. Oh, there it is. 
Okay, many among his disciples heard him. Well, first of all, he reads out of the New King James. I'll be reading out of the message. Many among his disciples heard this and said, this is tough teaching, too tough to swallow. Jesus sensed that his disciples were having a hard time with this and said, does this rattle you completely? What would happen if you saw the son of man ascending to where he came from? The spirit can make life. Sheer muscle and willpower and willpower don't make anything happen. Every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word, and so it is life-making. But some of you are resisting, refusing to have any part in this. Jesus knew from the start that some weren't going to risk themselves with him. He knew also who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you earlier that no one is capable of coming to me on his own. You get to me only as a gift from the Father. <laughs> After this, many of his disciples left. They no longer wanted to be associated with him. Then Jesus gave the twelve their chance. Do you also want to leave? Peter replied, Master, to whom would we go? You have the words of real life, eternal life. We've already committed ourselves, confident, that you are the Holy One of God. Mm, man, so you got this multitude that because he gave this miracle of the bread and the fish, all of a sudden, everybody wanted to come. But the moment Jesus started to share his word, the people got mad. And they just, all the, you know why? That lets us know that all along, all they wanted was the gift. Yeah. All they wanted was the, was the blessing, not the blesser. All they wanted was the gift, not the gift giver, you know? So Jesus confronts it straight up, knowing that he was going to turn the crowd away from him. And they got angry. And many of his, his own disciples, not looky Lou's, his disciples, not the 12, but disciples or, or students, walked away from him that day. And he looks at Peter, his main ones, he says, what, you're going to leave too? And I love the answer Peter gives. He says, where else are we going to go? Who, hell, who else? Wait. Master to, no, right here. Master to whom would we go? You have the words of real life, eternal life. I love the fact that Peter didn't say, but 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 you got the miracles. Yeah. Oh, but you got the healing. Yeah. Oh, you you got the prophetic word. You or, or, multiplied the bread. You yeah, multiplied you, no, the fish. No, no, no. Yeah, Peter was like, he went deep. Yeah. He says, Lord, where else are we going to go? Only you have the words yeah. that give life. Yeah. You are the bread of life. So ask yourself this, and I asked it at the end of the sermon on Sunday. If you never saw another healing again, if you never saw another demon cast out again, if you never heard a prophetic word again, is Jesus still enough for you? Yeah. Because Beautiful. right then and there, you know, are you some of the ones that just want to see him make more bread? Are you there to hear his words of life? Well, the thing is, are you miracle enough? Are you? Mm -hmm. You know, you got to you gotta realize that you're a miracle yourself. Are you miracle enough to believe that, that he is enough? Yeah. You know? Because, because only we know how bad of a situation we were in that only he can ever pull us out of the situation we mm -hmm. were in. You know, because there is there is no one that could ever know how bad our situation was. You know, like when you talk about when you talk about how bad of a person you were, or you know the situation that you were in, yeah. that there could have been no other only but Jesus that could ever t take you and pull you out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, only 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 you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's only the Lord. So here's the thing, right, is a lot of people say what what I just said that don't believe in the healings. Yeah. That don't so to me I disqualify to me those people self disqualify themselves because there are people that don't believe miracles are for today. They don't believe tongues are for today. They don't believe uh deliverance is of today. We do. We do believe in the gift of tongues. We do believe in the gift of healing. We do believe in deliverance. 
not only do we believe it, we see it. We live this thing, guys. Just because I don't turn the camera on, you know, because why why would I if some if, if a demon is humiliating somebody, why would I put the camera on them? Yeah. That that is the last thing on our minds. We'll get grab the camera. The first thing is we want to see this person free because the Satan has lied to this person long enough and held them bound. So this is not coming from somebody with a doctrine that that stuff don't happen. This stuff does happen, but here's the thing. This is what I have learned. Both of us have learned. Is that Jesus has to be the focus. Yes, amen. He has to be the focus. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it mixed up. Don't be the ones that just want the bread. Don't be that one, guys. If, if you trust anything we say, if you have been following us for this long, quit following the bread and follow the bread giver. Mm. He says, I am the bread of life. He's the bread. The bread maker, the bread giver. And here's the thing, right? I, I was just saying this to Brother Hassan today at dinner. I said, you know, when there's a boat, now I'm going to use that example. When you see a boat going across a lake, it creates a wake. You know what a wake is? Is that wave in the back? And eventually it gets... Like a ripple? Yeah, the ripple effect. The wake goes further and further and further out. That, my friend, is what should be the gifts. Because you are walking in the things of God... The wake are the spiritual gifts that are going to happen. The boat doesn't brag about the wake. The boat doesn't stop to say, wow, look at the wake I'm making. The boat just goes forward. But the wake eventually hits everything. So when you are in Christ, walking directly, the wake of the Spirit of God where healings are going to happen, deliverance is going to happen, anointed words, tongues, all of that is going to happen, but it's just going to be the wake. The main thing, the boat is Jesus. That's the main thing. And he's the wake maker. Get it? Oh, way maker. So please, guys, if you trust anything we say, please take that to heart and, and truly ask yourself always, am I the ones, am I the one that is just there to see Jesus make another miracle from bread? Or am I there? To hear his life-giving words. You know, Jesus, uh, uh, Peter decided to stay. John decided to stay. The di disciples decided to stay. And what happened? They turned the world right side up. That's what yeah. happened. Yeah. You know, and that's what I wanted to share. Like I said, well, I guess it did get biblical. because we're, <laughs> You know, so read, guys, read on your own the whole chapter. Read John chapter 6. Inhale it. Read it. Don't just skim through it. Let it become, just really, really meditate on chapter 6 that Jesus literally let a whole bunch of people walk away from him. And notice what he didn't do? He didn't go chasing after them. Yeah. Because he knew. They just want the bread. They don't want me. And uh, I think that crowd still exists. Maybe there's 90% of Christianity that just want the bread. But maybe, just maybe, you can be the remnant that wants him. Amen. So I, I, I think that's a good ending right there. Yeah. Amen. So guys, we pray this blesses you. We pray that this speaks to you, speaks to your heart, speaks to your spirit. You know, and, um, and uh, and that's pretty much it. That you have a blessed day and have a great day today. And yeah. And guys, we will once again be um, picking clothes up if you're local. Um, get that clothes ready, guys. You know we'll be going going ahead of picking up clothes from two to five o'clock. Um, we can go a little bit longer after five o'clock. We'll, I'm going to say maybe about five thirty or so. Um, if you happen to, um, have our information and you need us to wait a little bit after five o'clock, you know, just notify us either through email or through text, um, and let us know that you're going to be there a little bit after five o'clock, but, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, let us know we're picking up our, the clothes, uh, clothes so we can get it ready for the, uh, giveaway at the end of the month of March 26, 2022 guys. 
Um, so we will be picking up tomorrow, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, guys, which is the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th of March, 2022. So that way we can start separating everything, um, that way we can get everything ready. I am asking if you can bring it uh, washed, that would be great. Uh, and remember guys, if it's not good enough for you, it is not good enough for anybody. We want to make sure that we uh, do things always in excellence unto the Lord, you know, and that Amen. we make sure that we are able to give people things that they can use. It can be any size for babies, children, men, women, um, it, it doesn't matter, guys. We just want to make sure that we're giving families a variety of things when they do come uh, to pick up their food, that they're also able to come and pick up for, um, for a clothing as well for their family. Also, if you do know a family who is in need, who is local to the Modesto area, um, we will have uh, 50... Um, 50, uh, my God, help me out here. Food giveaway? Yes, there will be 50 uh, boxes available that we will be registering that day. Um, once 50 is done, we will have no more available. So we will be registering 50 people that day there presently. Um, so guys, that is all we will have available for that day. And, um, but we will be sharing a little bit more as we go. So that is all we're going to be able to register, for, register for that day, um, which is the 26th. And we'll see how we do on that day. And once those 50 are gone, then for the following month, we'll be able to register a little bit more, but we have to start somewhere. This will be our first one. Once we do the first one, then we'll be able to do more for the following month. But, um, we got to start somewhere guys, you know, so um, let's just get this going. And I'm really, really, truly excited uh, to see what the Lord is doing with the food ministry and with the clothes giveaway. Amen. All right, guys. All right, guys. We love you guys. God bless you. Bye.